Watch the Mysteries of Existence channel for divine enlightenment. To know more about yourself, the physical and subtle aspects of the universe, and the source of all that is. This is a message brought to you by the Harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Uzorma, author, Archbishop, University Chancellor, Scholar in Extraterrestrial Research, Professor of Christian Education at St. Thomas Abekic University, England, recipient of Nelson Mandela Excellent Leadership Award in Africa, former living Grand Master in the Order of Terrestrial and Astral Hierarchy, amongst others. Dear listeners, this is the interlude session 23 in this Mysteries of Existence channel, titled, Life After Death Experiences, Part 10. It is a great exposition of the harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Uzorma, for every human on earth, which is read here as follows. Children of men, this Mysteries of Existence channel is a school of its own, but not brought about by me. It is designed to enable us to wake up and stand, as well as to grow in the journey of life. Remember, whoever fails to wake up cannot stand. Divine growth is on the individual basis, not in the terms of congregations or organizations. Congregations of organized religions may give you a little clue on the nature of reality and the mysteries thereof. However, it is you and you alone that will personally imbibe the true recognition of the mysteries of your existence. The hidden aspects of your existence are embedded within diverse mysteries. This is the ultimate truth. Nevertheless, you are the one who must make the greatest efforts to thoroughly comprehend the mysteries of your existence. Even what I am saying here still falls into the regions of some little guidance, because the greater reality of these things is embedded within the ambit of your consciousness and experience. Therefore, in our time this platform is situated on the path of guidance to the children of men, towards the recognition of some mysteries of existence. The more we know about the hidden things of our existence, the mysteries of existence, the more we are situated on the higher path of conscious divine ascent, in the journey of life. Now, I, the harbinger of the last covenant, is not an island of knowledge at all. Who made me an island of knowledge? Like they used to say in Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia and other places, who dash monkey banana. No one is an island of knowledge, but the value of knowledge is the ability to communicate same to others. That is what I am trying to do. I always pray to the Almighty God of creation to enable me, by His mercy and divine empowerment, to always speak for our divine enlightenment, and for the guidance of my fellow humans. In this terms then, I communicate the little brought to me to others, hoping that someone somewhere will use same to grow and advance the course of being. And even if one person does this, then the mission of this Mysteries of Existence channel is fulfilled. Earthman, the subject matter of this interlude sessions, namely, life after death experiences, is a great school of itself in the world of man. No school on earth will teach you these things, not even the most advanced theological institutions on earth. These th things are not fabricated by me either. Rather, these things are sent forth to our world by the Lord Himself and the advanced extraterrestrial intelligences, via the harbinger of the Last Covenant, which is Myself by grace. They represent what should be known now, before further progression in the scale of existence. Earthman, whatever that happens in life has a cause. In the divine terms, nothing happens by chance. You are not on this Mysteries of Existence channel by chance either. The Almighty God of creation is also known as the first cause, the prime cause of all causes, the ultimate and consummate divine pyramid of all interrelated consciousness. Nothing in all the universes of God can escape the instant recognition of the Almighty God of creation. 
The movement of an ant, the action of waves, the entire existence and experiences of the Earthman, life and death, the projections of the most advanced extraterrestrial intelligences, and all that is, are within the instant knowing in the supreme consciousness of the Almighty God of creation. In Him, the Almighty God of creation, all things are one, but divided in manifestations to appear as two. And, so, we have light and darkness, male and female, life and death, to mention but a few. Here, apparent duality in manifestation is involved in existence. This is more profuse in all the middle and lower planetary systems, including the world of man. Thus, life and death are one, but divided to appear as two. Life comes from the debris of death, yet life is the father of death. Again, death is the mother of a greater life, the life enacted after the occurrence of death. To this end, life and death are one in the overall gestalt and united eternal continuity of being. Earthman, you must understand that parts of the one whole idea of existence are only seeming. There are no two different sources for all that is. There is only but one eternal source for all that is, namely, the Almighty God of creation. Therefore, there are no two separate parts of separable things in all the universes of God. There is nothing but the one whole simulation of the one whole self of the Almighty God of creation. As such, the entire creation is but one whole divine idea of the Almighty God of creation. This one whole divine idea is divided into multitudinous ideas of countless identities, via countless simulation ideas of mind through motion. The rhythmic waves of all the universes of God are electrically geared together by the one supreme consciousness of the Almighty God of creation. Consequently, changes of conditions in any one part of existence are simultaneously reflected in every other part, and are sequentially repeated in existence, in the cycles of eternal waves flowing from the universal mind of the one eternal almighty God of creation. Parts of the summary of the mysteries of existence are embedded herewith. Therefore, when this is fully recognized by the earthman, he will no longer be afraid of death. For, in reality, no one dies. What the Earthman calls death is nothing but a little bridge between the life that we know and the life currently unknown to many of us. The one who is alive is dead somewhere, and the one who is dead is alive somewhere. Earthman, in the so-called unknown life in the hereafter, many things occur. In this recognition, many things are possible. Consequently, when one dies and is buried somewhere, but continues to live physically elsewhere, it is a minute aspect of the occurrences in the life after death experiences. The ignorance of this kind of reality, experience and existence has greatly bamboozled the children of men. Nevertheless, it remains a part of what happens in the mysteries of existence, but situated completely outside the purview of the human organized religions and scriptural interpretations. Thus, what is talked about this, what is preached about it, is completely feeble in approximation to what is experienced in it. The air of life, within the five different parts of the life current, even the subtle aspects of the atomic structures therein, must be completely dissolved in order for death to totally occur. I mean death in which the individual involved is not reverted back to still live physically elsewhere, with the replica of the same body form, utilized at the moment of death. However, if the subtle aspects of the atomic structures, within any of the five kinds of the air of life, is not completely dissolved at the point of death, the individual involved will be reverted back physically from the subphysical realms, to live elsewhere amongst humans. There are several humans like this today on Earth, I mean the so-called dead amongst the living, living in different parts of the world of man. You see some of them daily, but without knowing that they were dead and buried elsewhere. The subtle aspects of the atomic structures of being, inherent in the five different airs of life, 
can't be completely dissolved if the mission of a particular Earth life is not fulfilled. The dead individual involved will then materialize to live physically elsewhere, to fulfill the remaining part of a particular mission. It is said that knowledge is power. That is true. If you know that someone is dead, for instance, that knowledge is equally embedded with certain amount of subtle power, in the ethereal range of your consciousness. This power projects certain subjective radiation, by your current aura and the flux in your electromagnetic fields of being. Now, if you encounter such a dead person who is still living physically elsewhere, because you are aware of his prior death, your knowing of same will immediately cause something to happen. The power embedded with this knowledge of his previous death, is completely at variance to the reality of his physical existence amongst humans. The subtle radiation inherent in this knowledge, emanating from your aura, will immediately send him off. The dead one who is still physically living will then disappear from the sight of the living humans. Even then, this doesn't occur by chance. No coincidence is involved here. Now, the day and time for this kind of thing to occur, namely, the disappearance of a dead person still physically living elsewhere, is known to the monitors who guide the path of death. The divine monitors are the ones that make all the necessary arrangements for such a disappearance to occur in the first place. As already mentioned, for one to die somewhere but still physically lived elsewhere, means that a particular mission is not fulfilled. He will then fulfill his mission in his new physical location. This mission may be big or small, known or unknown, from the human standards of recognition, as I mentioned in the last interlude session. The Earthman may fulfill his allotted earthly mission and still lived several years thereafter, before his physical death. This is a little bonus for his earthly existence. It occurs under certain conditions. The Earthman may depart or die immediately after the fulfillment of a particular mission, under certain conditions. Furthermore, the Earthman may have an emergency exit of consciousness or sudden death, without the fulfillment of a particular mission. Thus, he could be reverted back to still live physically elsewhere amongst humans, in fulfillment of the mission. This equally occurs under certain conditions. Now, for instance, you may be born on Earth with a specific mission to rescue a particular child or someone from drowning in the water. As part of the preparations for this mission, the urge to learn how to swim will be predominant in your consciousness. Thus, you may even become a perfect swimmer. You may be completely ignorant of this mission. Consequently, you will carry on with different aspects of the Earth life. However, all your earthly endeavors will somewhat be subordinate to this central mission. Your mission could be fulfilled in a day, but you may depart immediately thereafter or still live for several years more. Also, you may not fulfill this mission, via emergency exit or sudden death, and be reverted back to physically fulfill same. Regardless of your set mission, however, whatever that you acquired in the course of your entire earth life, in thoughts, words, and actions, will further add to your rise or fall in the scale of existence. Even the contour, creativity, and spontaneity enacted in the course of the fulfillment of a mission, and in your general physical existence, add to the multiplicity of your core identity in the realms beyond. The manner in which this occurs may not be fully expressed in the human terms. In this interlude sessions, I am currently on the subject matter of some people who died somewhere but still physically living elsewhere. I am not yet done with this. This experience is situated in a unit of the first stage of the life after death experiences. Overall, however, no one should be afraid of death for death is one of the illusions emanating from the universal body of the one eternal almighty God of creation. The thought of death is the enemy of man, 
and it is the last enemy to be destroyed in the human consciousness. The destruction of this illusory recognition should be done now in your consciousness. Once again, remember the words of the dead to the living, thus, yesterday I was like you, tomorrow you will be like me. Let the earthman always bear this in mind, in all that he does in the world of man. That will be all for now. A word is enough for the wise. Peace and blessings.